What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brandy and in today's video, I am doing a very highly requested video. I am sharing with you guys my DIY restoration hardware inspired cement bowl and candle and I'm gonna show you guys how I made it. Now, I do have to say that I originally found this idea off of an account on Instagram called Joinery & Co. And I made the bowl just like this is the one I made for this video, but I didn't like the seam on the inside. I just didn't like the indentation. I thought it looked DIY and I just, I didn't care for that personally. So I thought of the idea of making a candle and basically all I did was take some old candles that I had laying around. I melted them down and I just poured them into the cement bowl. Now I do mention this in the video, but you're gonna, if you're gonna use this for like, a lot of people wanted to use it as a fruit bowl or anything like that, you're gonna want to seal it and make it food safe. But I will say for both of the candles that I made, I did not seal it. You probably should, you can, but I didn't have any, any troubles with it. Now, I am not the best DIY. I don't follow the rules, I do my own thing. So I'm just warning you now that I probably didn't do a lot of things correctly. <laughs> but I just thought I would share this with you guys because so many of you wanted to see it and it really is a piece that I feel like elevates my home and I think that you guys will really like it. And it was incredibly affordable. I think it was less than $12 for me to do the whole project. If you need to buy candles, that might give you a little bit, you know, more add on more to the cost, but you don't, you don't have to make a candle. That's just what I did. But this is the one that I made for this video. And as you can see, it's really smooth. And the reason why it's really smooth is because I added way too much water. I was trying to make sure I was in focus and I poured in too much water. However, it still worked. And I really, really love this smooth look. I think it's very modern. And I really, really love that look. It looks like I bought this. And then the first one that I ever made, um, did not have nearly as much water in there so it's very porous at first i did not like this at all but you know i it's i've grown to love it and then the other candle that i made for some reason it's like this one's a lot more of a warmer tone but it's the same batch as this if you get the same bag of cement that i had you'll be able to make both a big one and a small one out of that one bag before we get into the video, please subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up so I know that you like these kinds of videos and I know to do more. And don't forget to give me some love in the comments. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Brandy J. Jackson, Brandy with a Y. And I'll have everything linked down below. On Instagram, I share a lot of behind the scenes. I share unboxings, I share more fashion and lifestyle, recipes, all kinds of things. But one last thing that I wanted to say before we get into the video, anything and everything that you see that I'm wearing, I'm going to start adding in the description because I get a lot of questions on what I'm wearing or what my lip color is, things like that. So I'm going to add that for you guys, everything that I can. Like I know I can't add this necklace here because it is vintage, but anything that I can, link below, I will for you guys so that it's always in there. I know for myself watching videos, sometimes I wanna know where people got things and I'm always like digging and digging and I can never find it. So I'm gonna try to do that for you guys. Now, let's get into the video. The first thing that you're gonna do is take your vegetable oil and put it on the inside of your bottom mold bowl. And what this does is just make it so that when you release it, it's a nice clean release. And then you're gonna put it on the outside of the top bowl that you're gonna use for the mold. And the rocks are just so it weighs it down and keeps the bowl in place. So when it dries, it keeps its mold. And you're gonna just do this also because you can use these 
molds, these bowls, again another time. Next, you're just gonna add your water to your concrete. And I'm using stir sticks. By the end, I was using four stir sticks. But this is just gonna take some, a little bit of elbow grease. If you have a paddle that you can add to like a drill, it's gonna be a lot better, but you will get there. Just keep stirring. It does get a little bit easier if this is your only option. When pouring your concrete, you're gonna wanna make sure that you check out your molds and make sure that you give yourself enough space. Mine had a weird little like spout lip and I just wanted to make sure I didn't pour where it would go inside of that little space right there. So I wanted to make sure I gave myself enough space where it would just fill up right to that point but not go inside of it. And then the bowl on top, you're gonna wanna make sure you add some rocks, something heavy, but not too heavy that you don't give yourself enough space at the bottom because you wanna give yourself a good you know, inch or two um, of space on the bottom so that the bowl just doesn't sink down through. So when you take your bowls out, they should just pop right out because you've oiled the inside of your bowl. And when you take the top part off, if you just give it a little like shimmy or you know a rock back and forth, it will come right out as well. It just comes out beautifully and very seamless. I took the top bowl off with the rocks in it after about 24 hours and then let it dry a little bit more. After you take it out of the bottom mold, it is going to still need time to dry. So don't do anything drastic. Give it a couple days to dry before you do anything to it. Okay guys, so for the candle, what you're gonna want is some old candles or you can buy new, you know, whatever you have. And then I have just these little like mini uh, clothespins that I think we picked up at the dollar store years ago, but we just had them and these worked out great or something to clip the wicks down. And I'm just using kebab sticks to hold the wicks in place in the candle to kind of keep them from falling down in the candle. And if you are having issues, I'm not using any kind of weights to hold down the wicks. If you're, I don't really plan on lighting the candles. So if I were to light the candles, then maybe I would um, use a something to hold them down. But since I'm not, I, it, I don't need to do that. So this is an absolute mess. I'm just gonna warn you now, it's very, very messy. I'm just using this uh, cheese slicer thing, cheese spatula, whatever this is called, to cut my candles. And basically I just like chop off little pieces. It's very tedious and it's gonna take you a little bit of time. Um, and I end up just throwing this out. This is just an old Ikea uh, plastic cutting board that we have. And I'll just end up throwing it out because the wax is not worth saving. If you have a better surface to, so that you don't have to like toss something, do that. But because I don't have anything better, this is what I have. So I basically just chop this up and until I can fill up that little small candle. One other thing, this, I was having to take a razor blade cause I did get it on like the, um, the stove top and all over the granite, but a razor blade cleans it right up. For the big one, I used four wicks. For this one, I think I'm gonna use two wicks. And I just kind of overdid it. I know that three candles will fill up that, probably two candles will fill up this small one. And then I have a different idea for the big one that I'm gonna show you guys as well. Just to give you some, you know, inspiration, design ideas to use your cement bowls for. Um, a lot of people were saying that they wanna use the cement bowls for a um, fruit bowl. I will say you will want to set the bowl so that you can do that. Also, you can just buy wax off of Amazon, but I had extra candles sitting in a closet. So I just thought this was the perfect way to repurpose the candle and be resourceful. So 
that is what I'm doing. It's a mess though, just to warn you. The other thing too is I didn't seal these at all. I am not like the top best DIYer. I kind of just do my thing and hope for the best. So if you want to be a little bit more precise with it, maybe seal it, especially if you're going to use it for like a fruit bowl or whatever. If you're going to put food in it, for sure seal it. But for me, I am a little daredevil, so I did not. Once you have your first candle all chopped up, you're going to start melting that first candle just on low. I don't do it. I just put it on melt actually. And then I already started this one, but once you get the candle off of the wick, you are going to just set it aside because we're going to use it for the new candle. And then you're going to chop off the part that you have burned if you burned it. And that way it's like a nice new fresh candle. Okay. And then once I have my wax in here, I'm just going to let it start melting. If you plan on adding scent to this candle, or you can actually use like maybe your favorite candle and just break it down, melt it, dump it into your new cement candle bowl. But if you plan, these are unscented and I did use a, on the one that I already made, I used an essential oil, but you need a lot of the essential oil because I put the whole bottle in and it still doesn't even smell. So just be warned that if you do plan on making it scented, either use a candle that you love already that already has the scent or uh, definitely be prepared to use a lot of essential oil because it does, it does take a bit. Okay, so at this point, if you want to seal your candle, I would seal it by now. And then what I'm going to do is because I'm gonna be taking the pot and pouring it in, I'm going to just give myself a little bit of space for just in case I spill. And then I'm gonna take the kebab stick because I'm only doing two wicks, I only need one kebab stick, but I'm gonna take the kebab stick and place it right in the center. I'm actually gonna make sure it's right in the center. And then I'm gonna take my two wicks and actually there's like that little seam at the bottom that I'm just kind of using to guide where I'm gonna place them. So I'm just clipping them right on, the wicks right on there. And this one's actually a little longer. Just using that as like my guide and I think it'll make it look a lot more even and then once the the wax is poured in here I can cut the wicks down a little shorter okay you guys I am about to pour the wax and I wanted to show you I have the tin foil right here and I have it all set up I wanted to show you guys before I pour the wax what I have done to try to keep it as clean as possible and not get the wax on the cement surroundings for the bowl. And then this is just kind of how I have it going. So the wax is all melted. And now I'm just going to pour it in. make any adjustments on your clothespins or however you're holding it in there while the wax is hot because obviously once it cools down these are going to be stuck so I just wanted to make sure that I, this one over here the tip of the uh, clothespin was in the wax so I wanted to make sure that wasn't in there and we're looking good If you don't want to make a candle and you want your just to have a bowl as a decorative piece, I thought it would be really pretty to add the moss. Now this moss was not the color I would normally choose. It was so bright green, 
but I have seen the concrete bowls with the moss in Restoration Hardware and other luxury stores. So I really wanted to have this option as well. However, I am going to be purchasing a different color moss because this one is a little yikes. And there you have it, you guys. That's exactly how I made my concrete bowl and my candle. And I am excited to have the other one to decorate with. But don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.